Hey, how is it that we haven't done Edward Scissorhands on this show? We seriously have no explanation whatsoever. Massive oversight aside, we're doing it now, and that's what counts. Here are seven things you didn't know about Edward Scissorhands. Probably. What did you do to your hair? Edward cut it, isn't it wild? The hairdos in Edward Scissorhands are a big part of the film's iconography, especially Edward's own haircut. Most of the talent was able to achieve their unique hairstyles with wigs, but there were several cast members who didn't have that option and basically just had to commit to the bit. I'm talking, of course, about the dogs. The dogs in Edward Scissorhands all got the haircuts you see in the final film for real. Remember, the movie came out in 1990. Back then, computer effects just weren't as practical as, well, practical effects. So when you see a dog with a goofy haircut in the movie, that dog really got that haircut. The dog's haircuts in Edward Scissorhands aren't the only effect that had to be figured out without the help of CGI. Take this shot when Peg sees the inventor's castle in her rearview mirror. That castle is real. Well, it's a real miniature, but you know, it existed tangibly in the world and that counts as real. The art department got the shot by just mounting a model castle on a C-stand and positioning it so that we'd be able to see it in the mirror. Classic movie magic trickery. Simple as that. This is fascinating. I wouldn't want to miss a moment of it. <laughs> Next thing. Along with the Robert Smith-inspired hair, the Edward Scissorhands costume is a cultural and cosplay classic. But most people don't know just how eclectic the costume materials are. Sure, it's got some leather and latex, which you'd expect, but it's also made of less predictable materials, like gaffer's tape and pieces of Tim Burton's sofa. The suit also had a cooling system to be worn underneath it, but it was so cumbersome that it really just made wearing the costume even hotter. So Johnny Depp didn't even bother with it. You look fine, just fine. Yeah. Still, even without a heavy air conditioning onesie on underneath, Johnny Depp found out firsthand just how miserable it was to wear the Edward costume. That was a segue! Becoming Edward was a physical challenge for Johnny Depp, and way harder than the ones on Double Dare. He had to sit in hair and makeup for two hours every day for the four months of shooting. And after that, he had to wear a rubber suit in extremely hot Florida weather, which is where they shot Edward Scissorhands. The rigors of filming led to Depp barfing on two separate occasions. The first time was from doing 20 takes of this scene, when all the housewives are smashing food into his face. I mean, just looking at that ambrosia makes me want to Ralph, so it's no surprise that Depp wound up hurling after eating gross food, all while wearing a latex couch suit in f***ing Florida. Yuck. The other time he got sick was from doing take after take of this shot, with Edward running all the way to the end of the road. Yet again, repeated takes, plus an extremely hot, non-breathable costume, plus Florida, equals a puke party, with Johnny Depp at the top of the guest list. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead, smile, it's funny. Tim Burton opted to shoot Edward Scissorhands in a suburb just east of Tampa, Florida, because it reminded him of how Burbank used to look when he was growing up there. And there was one unexpected bonus that came from shooting in Florida. There's a Backstreet Boy in Edward Scissorhands. Oh! To be fair, it really is a blink and you'll miss it type of deal, but the blonde kid on the slip and slide in the background right there is Nick Carter. We can admit that it's really hard to tell who the hell that is, but trust us, it really is him. He's even got Edward Scissorhands listed on his IMDb page for all you non-believers. So, so there. Going back to the challenges of shooting in Florida, as if the heat, humidity, and generally just being in Florida weren't bad enough, there was another problem. Bugs. There would be bug swarms so thick that production would have to shut down. They wouldn't be able to shoot because all the bugs would just look like grain on the film. With all the stopping and starting, the clouds would move around and the natural lighting would shift and it would be next to impossible to try to match the clouds in the final film. If you have absolutely nothing better to do, you can probably spot some exterior scenes where it almost looks like a completely different day from shot to shot. But we have something better to do and that's moving on to our last thing. What's your name? Edward. Because Edward Scissorhands went on to become such a huge deal, it's hard to imagine anyone else playing the characters in the film. And you may be even more surprised to find out who almost did. Johnny Depp wasn't Tim Burton's first choice. Burton actually didn't know Depp at all because he'd never seen 21 Jump Street and had only looked at a few pictures of him. Instead, Gary Oldman was first offered the part of Edward and he turned it down. Other contenders included Tom Hanks, Jim Carrey, Robert Downey Jr., and even Michael Jackson. And the studio was pushing hard for Tom Cruise, who was hot shit at the time because of Rain Man. Also, it was 1990, so Tom Cruise was at the peak of his being hot shit. 
Anyway, he didn't like the unhappy ending of the movie, and Burton was firm on not changing it no matter what, so Cruise was off the table. Luckily, Burton took a chance on Johnny Depp, who was looking to break away from the perception that he was just another teenage heartthrob from TV. Have a nice time, cutie. Ultimately, Burton felt that the conflict of being seen in a way that doesn't really represent who you are really connected Johnny Depp to Edward. And we got a classic movie out of the deal, as well as a bunch of shitty Tim Burton movies with Johnny Depp, but, you know, Scissorhands is good. Those are our seven things du jour, but we also have an Edward Scissorhands episode of DIY Costume Squad on the channel, so be sure to check that out. And let us know if you guys want us to do a Things You Didn't Know About Beetlejuice by hitting the thumbs up. Let's just keep the old school Tim Burton love going. Last but not least, head on over to Cinefix.com and subscribe for more truish things about movies and sometimes Tim Burton's old sofa right here on Things You Didn't Know. I wish we'd been taking that. I'd give my left not to see that again. I